I'm Richard Saxton. My guest on Market Talk is Glenn Neely. He is with the Elliott Wave Institute out of Laguna Beach and has been following the Elliott Wave theory for about 13, 14 years. And uh, you have actually your own interpretation of uh, Elliott Wave, the theory that was popularized by R.N. Elliott. Uh, you have somewhat what you call a neo-wave approach, which right. is a little bit different than the uh, pure theory that R.N. Elliott had and that uh, Bob Prechter and uh, A.J. Frost made popular in their book back in the late 70s. Right. It's um, sort of an advanced form of Elliott wave theory that I've been building on and adding to for about almost 10 years now. Okay. Give us the definition of the Elliott wave theory the way you see it and how yours differ from the conventional methods. Well, generally, Elliott wave is a mathematical form of mass psychology or a way to graphically show mass psychology on a market chart and neowave is taking that a step further and adding concepts of logic and what I would relate to vector physics so those are the additions that it's pretty complicated but those are the additions that I've laid over Elliott wave and it uh, just makes it a more rigorous process okay we're going to take a look at your charts and when we do and we're going to uh, discuss that the Elliott wave principle is is a five wave structure so the the waves uh, have a repeating five wave sequence. Generally five waves in the direction of a trend and three waves against the direction of the trend. And then it's broken down in ABC corrections and right. different waves within the, that overall structure. That's correct. Let's uh, look at the first trend and tell us what your long-term view is. I know that uh, you've mentioned uh, in the past you're looking for a hundred thousand on the Dow, believe it or not. Well that's over <laughs> about a 70-year period. That target date is around 2065, so it's a very long time from now. So far we're moving up quite a bit and five or six years ago everyone thought I was out of my mind. Now, you know, at least the prediction that I said that the uh, crash of 87 would never be broken for the rest of my life at least looks a little bit more believable now. All right. Well, let's take a look at the first chart. Tell well, us about it. The first chart here is the long-term standard or uh, orthodox forecast that most LA wave analysts have. You can see here the wave one, two, three at the 1929 high, four at the 20 or 31 low. And then currently we're in wave five. That's what most LA wave analysts And it's wrong, believe. according to you, well, and I've, Don I've, Wallenchuk and a few others. Right. I've said for years and years that this count is wrong. I think Don Wallenchuk doesn't agree with this count either, I don't think. I think he thinks we're in a big third wave. But well, the, the third wave hasn't started yet is basically the way he sees <laughs> it, that we're, we're waiting for the epicenter of wave three to the right. upside. Um, he's been waiting for an explosive move, which we've sort of gotten, but not quite, I don't think, to the extent he wanted. So that's the standard count. If we can go down to the second chart. As we do, do you agree with Wallenchuk then? You're still waiting for an upside explosion? Um, I think he's very early. I think he's probably five or six years early. I don't think we'll get the kind of explosion he's talking about for quite some time. Okay, this chart? But the second chart here is my revision using neo wave analysis over the same time frame. Here's about the 1700s. Uh, we have wave one. Wave two, on my count, doesn't finish all the way until 1949. The primary reason for this change in count, if you notice the center of this advance here between about 1860 and 1929, it went sideways a great deal, which is not a characteristic of third wave patterns. Third waves usually are very explosive in the middle, and this one was very choppy. Mm -hmm. So that's the primary difference between the two scenarios. A couple seconds left, but this is an important chart on the S&P here. The bottom chart here was a forecast that I made in 1988 in Cycles Magazine, and I've just updated it here. Here's the forecast, and here's the result. You can see a very strong similarity between the two. What, what are your short-term uh, targets? And not your 70-year targets, but maybe your, uh, you know. For the next few weeks, few months, the uh, S&P will probably hit 700 in the cash market. And then we might have a chance for a relatively major top at that time. All right. So how much of a correction? Oh, pretty serious. Probably 25, 30 percent after that. All right. Glenn Neely, who is with the Elliott Wave Institute out of Laguna Beach, my guest on Market Talk. I'm Richard Saxton. My guest on Market Talk today is Glenn Neely. He is a uh, follower and interpreter of the uh, Elliott Wave Principle out of uh, Laguna Beach. He calls it the Elliott Wave Institute. You've published books. Uh, why the Elliott Wave? What gravitated you towards that technical discipline of the financial markets? Well, I think it was the fractal nature of the theory that it allows you to interpret all different time frames and how they all connect together in a larger sequence. It seemed to fit my experience of how uh, history unfolds. It's not just a linear process, but it's a fractal process. Like many others who follow Elliott, do you also look at the advanced decline line? Do you look at Fibonacci retracements? And I look at everything related to price structure, but I don't look at volume really. I don't look at other indicators outside of price action. Um, so I do use Fibonacci relationships in my calculations. All right. Uh, we're going to swing around and take a look at some more charts here. In your work primarily, you look at stocks, bonds, and gold. Do you look at 
the dollar and other financial I, markets? The U.S. dollar index I do follow generally for other syndicated radio shows that I do, but in general, these are the three markets that I follow in uh, publications that we release. Okay, well, let's go to these charts and give us a forecast as to where we may be headed, first of all, in the equity markets based on the S&P 500. Okay, this gets a little more specific from what you'd asked me earlier. This is a thrust that we've been in since 1994. We just recently had a pretty long series of corrective patterns, which are continuing up until today. The one final move that I'm looking for is a move back above 700 or around 700. That could take a few more months to occur and then it would take um, the S&P from that high all the way down probably to 600 or less. We'd be looking at a 100 to 150 point correction in the cash S&P and then eventually some more highs again. So that would be a major correction then in equities that you may the see? The first one. In a around time. what, election time? It's probably six months away, something like that, that probably will we'll see that top and then the large correction for the very first time in years, a really huge correction begin. All right, now let's take a look at the next chart, and that relates to gold. Uh, what's the expectation? And are these, what, what chart are we looking at? Is this gold stocks this or bullion? This is the cash gold market from London. This is London cash gold. All right. So uh, my general forecast has been what you see here forward since the low in 1993. Generally speaking, we're still in a complex series of corrections. We're due for one final large break down to about 360 to 350 in the cash market. And then from there, I think we'll get another large rally in gold back up into the 450, maybe 500 range. There's no evidence that gold's going to be in a long-term bull market any time for the next few years, even though we'll get a lot of upside sometime soon. Well, the market that uh, really controls uh, all the uh, strings, you might say, is right. the bond market, isn't it? So the right. forecast on the bond market is really impacting all the financial markets. It's and what, very critical. What do you see? Now, my long-term bond forecast is, I think, uh, very different from what most Elliott Wave analysts are saying. Generally, I think we're in an impulsive advance all the way since the lows of 19, uh, yeah, 1982. We're currently in a large fourth wave correction. That trend is sideways to down. It should remain that way for probably about two years or so, bottoming right below the lows of 1993, 94. And then I think we'll get one large final uh, hoorah, which could put interest rates in the 4 to 3% range way down the road. And that would be the impetus to continue eventually the stock market, uh, bull, bull market in stocks. When do you expect, I mean, first of all, what are you expecting, 7 8% before we get to 4% or, or how's it going to be? You're talking bond prices here, so yields work right. the other way. Right, the yields would be in the 8 to maybe 9% range before they finally bottom out and then start moving to 4 to 3% over the next, say, 10 years or so. So go on a buying binge when uh, rates get up to 8 9% exactly. buying bonds and exactly. you see rates dropping. I think we'll see point. the stock market progressing quite a bit after that. All right, Glenn Neely, who is with the Elliott Wave Institute out of Laguna Beach, my guest on Market Talk. Glenn Neely uh, joining me as we go to the futures update. We'll point out to you the cash CRB index was up 0.43 to 261.81. And uh, among the uh, movers today, meats were lower. We saw grains in the U.S. dollar move higher. Energy was somewhat mixed to volatile, and I don't know if you follow energy, but we see crude oil prices down 20 cents a barrel. That has thrown the inflation scare uh, out. Treasury bonds today up. Do you have any comments on the, uh, the short term or the recent activity in the uh, Treasury futures? Well, the, uh, the bond market is generally in a uh, mostly sideways period for now. I think we'll have an, a small uptrend sometime in the near future, but nothing real substantial for a while. We're going to be in mostly sideways action for the next few weeks. All right. Uh, looking, at, I don't know if you do overseas at uh, what those markets do. Do you look at Tokyo and in some of the Asian markets, European markets, and so on as far as the equity trading? No, I don't. Okay. Japan, I've looked at some charts there. It looks like Japan actually may be at a relatively major bottom for the first time in a long time. I noticed the spike up recently, which looks like that's a conclusion of the basing process for the last few years. So that could be pretty uh, optimistic for a while. All right. Today we see the Dow closing higher. Uh, it's been weaker while the NASDAQ has been stronger. Do you have any thoughts or interpretation on the NASDAQ versus the Dow and the S&P as to why the markets might be taking different directions on certain days? Well, obviously, they're not all based on the same um, companies, but the uh, S&P in general, I think, will be going down for the next few weeks. Uh, the uh, Dow Jones is in a world of its own, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but uh, the S&P is the primary market that I follow, and I think we'll be going down for about two weeks, and then we could have a really major buying opportunity in the S&P before the move to 700 that I mentioned earlier. Do you apply the uh, Elliott Wave principle to, uh, like the NASDAQ? No, actually just the S&P okay. and the Dow. All right. 
I, I don't know if we're stuck here on Treasury bonds, but I haven't seen the page turn in a few minutes. Well, if you want to come about gold, I can give you a comment. Yeah, why don't, why don't we talk about gold? <laughs> uh, the gold market uh, is one of the more potentially dangerous short-term situations. If uh, we break the most recent lows in gold, which was last week, I think, we could see gold drop as much as about 15 to $20 within a short period of time. So that's the most important thing to take a look at right now. If that doesn't happen, we'll be in a pretty much small trading range for a while, sideways to upward in gold. All right. The big picture, though, you uh, said earlier, and we're looking at gold now. We've got the boards moving here. Um, what uh, is the upside? You said, what, four to five hundred? I mean, five hundred dollars an ounce, you, you in said? The, in the gold market? Yeah. When well, do you that expect would be to see eventually. That? that would um, be approximately two or three years from right now if that takes place. And I do expect it to happen, but it won't start probably until late 1996 or early 97. And the rally would take at least a year or two to reach the four to five hundred range. I mean, the, sorry, the five hundred dollar range. Mm -hmm. Do you track the gold stocks as well as the bullion? No, strictly just the cash uh, indexes. Okay. Um, any uh, fundamentals that you look at at all, or is it strictly based on the Elliott Wave? Well, I do take a look at sentiment figures occasionally. I try to keep a, abreast of what the sentiment appears to be on television news shows and things like that, but nothing real scientific, more of a, uh, a look and feel process that I've just gained over doing this for 13, 14 years. Mm -hmm. Any other market internals? that you would look at to give you an indication whether it be on balance volume as we're mentioning earlier advanced decline line well i have my own proprietary index which i call my mode index it's mm -hmm. a it's a stands for multiple order accumulation tabulator but it's generally just a way to get overbought oversold readings there's nothing um that i use that's generally available to the public all right uh, we just went through and looked at the currencies what's your view on the u.s dollar uh, today the cash dollar index was up a half point 88.24 uh, is the u.s dollar continuing well, higher very mildly. I don't see any strong evidence for a strong up move. We've been moving up now for months and months in the U.S. dollar index, and I think within a few weeks to maybe a month, we could be near a very major top before a drop all the way back to the lows of 1994 or 95. So if uh, you know we keep in touch, I might be able to catch that particular top in the U.S. dollar. Okay. And again, technical reasoning behind... It's all Elliott wave-based or Neo wave-based. It has to do with the wave patterns that I see unfolding on a weekly and monthly time frame, and it indicates the psychology is approaching a climax sometime in the next month or so for the U.S. dollar. Do you track the uh, cash CRB index? Uh, not heavily, but I do keep an eye on it. Uh, it's been obviously rallying for a while, but it I don't think will continue to do so because the excitement or the attention it's drawn is a little too much too soon. So I think we're uh, still going to be drifting mostly sideways in that market until there's some attention drawn away from it to other markets. Okay. How reliable is your, your timing as opposed to your direction? Uh, my timing is very good as long as wave structure is good. Uh, an example of that has to do with the competition that you probably know that I'm in, uh, the methodology showdown. And that competition, um, I'm currently number two. I'm very neck and neck right now with Greg Metters. Um, but the timing in that competition has been very good. My winning trades are about 80 to 85 percent over losers, and the profit to loss is the same. So mm -hmm. that puts me in a very good timing uh, position. All right, we'll be back to take your phone calls uh, for Glenn Neely of the Elliott Wave Institute out of Laguna Beach when we come back in just a moment with more Market Talk. My guest today to take your phone calls is Glenn Neely of the Elliott Wave Institute out of Laguna Beach. He follows the Elliott Wave principle. Was it the uh, 1978 book that A.J. Frost and uh, Robert Prechter put together that sparked your interest in this, or how did you uh, uh, gravitate to this theory? No, I had read a book called The Commodity Futures Game, and that's where I had first read the words Elliott Wave. I didn't know about uh, Prechter and his organization for several years after I got involved with Elliott Wave. Okay, we're going to go to the phones here. You've lit up the lines. Uh, Charles, you have a question for Glenn Neely? Yeah, uh, actually one on gold and one on bonds, but the first one is, uh, at what point did you say that the bond yield would be around 85 or 9 percent? That should take place over about a one to two year time frame. We should be mostly going sideways to down uh, and increasing in yield, so the bond market be going down, the interest rates going up over the next one to two years, and then we could have a major buying opportunity for the bond market and the stock market. All right, Ted, your question. Yes, Glenn, appreciate your time. It's Ted Woodley. I noticed a breakout today to the upside on the gold chart, and I don't know how you can assume that we would have 
lower interest rates if all the other commodities are break into the upside and hyperinflationary type move. Okay, do you want to answer that one? Based on the long-term gold count, it's very improbable that we're going to have any kind of hyperinflation for many, many years. The worst case scenario that I have right now would be a move to about 720 over the next 5 to 15 years in gold and then a return all the way back down to 300. So I really wouldn't consider that hyperinflationary, but there's definitely some indications of inflation coming maybe two to three years down the road, but not anytime real soon. All right, Scott, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Glenn, uh, this move in the short term on the S&P uh, to the 700 area, do you think that'll be finished by the end of June, 1st of July? Of this year? Yes. No, extremely improbable. The uh, time frame that uh, we need to see on that is several months just for the up move to take place, and it probably won't begin for at least a few more weeks. Uh, and because of the uh, presidential election, I'm sure it might run into that time frame. Jay, go ahead. Uh, what do you think about the grain markets? Are, do you track them at all? I don't follow any grain markets at all. The wave theory doesn't really work too well with the grains, and it's uh, very dangerous to apply to, fun, to agricultural markets. It's somewhat interesting, A.J. Frost, who I used to interview regularly on a financial news network a number of years ago, uh, would tell me that really the Elliott wave was really best applied to the Dow, but you've got so many uh, Elliotticians, Elliotters applying it to virtually everything that trades. Right. Is That's, there something wrong with that? There is definite danger in trying to apply it to any markets that are affected by nature, um, by the weather, things that are not man-made. You really need to stick with man-made mass markets. Okay, and that would be the financial markets? That the currency markets. Uh, this gold market works well because it's an indestructible element, but most of the metals don't work too well. Okay. Once again, we have about 30 seconds left here. Talk about then on this correction that, that you're forecasting of 25 percent. Where what Dow levels, S&P levels that you think would, would hold as support as a worst case scenario? Well, based on the long term forecast and where we are right now, the, mass, the maximum downside would be somewhere in the 500 to 450 area on the cash S&P, but that's many years and away. And what would that be in Dow terms? Um, that would be approximately about 4,500. I would have to take a guess there. I don't follow the Dow as closely as I do the S&P. So about 1,000 points down from where we are now. Yeah, 20 to 30 percent. But then long term, you're bullish. Long term, I'm going to remain bullish probably for the next 50 years. <laughs> okay, what's your upside? So a year from now, where's the Dow going to be? Um, we'll probably exceed 6,000 when the S&P is exceeding 700, but I doubt we'll see much higher than 6,500 for quite a few years because going into the end of this century, we should see a really major correction, which is what I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and it won't be until after the turn of the century that we start to finally begin the next great bull market. Okay. Great to see you again, and thanks for coming thanks, up Richard. here. Uh, Glenn Neely of the Elliott Wave Institute out of Laguna Beach, my guest today on Market Talk.